So this weekend we've been testing out VW's T-Rock Convertible. It's the newly facelifted model and it comes in two engine sizes, a 1 litre and a 1.5 TSI. The one that we've been testing is the 1.5 TSI and it's hooked up to a 7 speed DSG gearbox. Just spent the weekend at VW Festival at Harewood House in Leeds and what a weekend to have a convertible. In the middle of a heat wave, 30 degrees. It's been a warm one. With the, the warm weather around, this car has garnered quite a lot of attention. Not just because it's the only convertible in VW's range at present, but the colour has drawn everybody in. It's a teal blue and it's really bright, really summery, looks fantastic. Excuse the cow grid. So, see you later, thank you. So it's now time to head home and see what this 1.5 TSI can do. Now we've got a little bit of cloud cover, which gives a little bit of respite from that sun over the top of your head. I've never driven a convertible before. We're driving one this weekend. I realised why so many people driving convertibles wear a peak tap. When that sun's bright up in the sky, bright blue, no clouds, that sun, even over the top of your sunglasses, can be uh, quite tiring. But no, I like this. This is lovely. So this car, as you'd expect with any, anything new from the VW range, is full of driving aids. We've got adaptive cruise control, got lane assist, got speed sign recognition. So this car right now, it knows that I'm in the national speed limit. So on the dashboard, it's pre-selected 60 mile an hour as my suggested cruise limit speed. Now I could bang cruise limit, uh, cruise control on there and it would take me up to 60 mile an hour, should the road allow it. Now I've got cars in front of me with the adaptive cruise control. If I let it control my speed for me, then it will only match the speed that the car's in front. It'll keep a safe distance back. And now that we're going to go into a 50 zone, that pre-recognised speed limit for the cruise control has dropped itself to 50 mile an hour. It's quite clever, really. So essentially, just press the resume button. I'm on cruise control. The car can drive. Oh, sorry. The car can control its speed itself. Now the cars in front of me are preparing for the corners they're controlling the speed and we can just follow them stay a nice safe distance looks all gravy baby okay now we're approaching the 30 zone there we go 30 mile an hour the car has automatically dropped to 30 mile an hour i haven't touched the brake or brake or accelerator i haven't touched any of the cruise, cruise control settings the car has automatically selected the speed from it some might say that's intrusive. I quite like it. It's a definite license saver. The car has an electro-hydraulic roof. It takes just nine seconds to open and 11 seconds to close. It's all electronically controlled by a little switch down here where I'd normally find the handbrake. And you can pull the roof off while you drive as long as you're not going faster than 19 miles an hour. Now over the course of the weekend, I've talked to a lot of people about the car. We've had it at the side of our club stand, and whenever we take a car along, we always seem to get a lot of attention for it. We've talked to a lot of people that have come up and said, wow, this is a great colour. The colour's been an absolute show winner this weekend. Now what surprises me about this colour, particularly on the car that's been used by the press office for promotion, is that it's a free colour option. It doesn't cost any more, which I think's fantastic. So the engine that we've got in this car is a 1.5, TSI 150 PS 
and that's enough to carry the car on yeah, to not 62 in 9.4 seconds at a top speed of 127 miles an hour. I'm cruising on English roads. I can't test the top speed. But the pickup from the engine, yeah, if you knock it into sport mode yeah, and give it a bit of kick down, it sounds awesome and it goes. So there's a feral takeoff. So let's have a look. Oh, we've got a Land Rover in front of us. We're not going anywhere fast. So what traffic have we got? Let's have a look. Oh, we can have that gap there and we can go. So we've got the windbreaker in. So that's one of the added extras that's included on this car. Now, as we test the car here, with all the extras and bits and bobs that it's got with it, I believe there's a reversing camera that's extra, the wind deflector that's extra. You can take that out and have four, yeah, and give you four seats. That little girl sat in there, she loves it. Likes a little bit of wind in the hair. Yeah, it's all great. Um, but as this car stands on the road price, just a sniff short of uh, 40,000 pounds. Now I'm a tight Yorkshireman and I think that's a lot of money, but I spoke to a lot of people this weekend and they were like, that's not bad. I thought it would have been more. So yeah, a bit of a split opinion there. But like I said, I'm a cheapskate. The other thing that's garnered quite a lot of attention this weekend is the boot space. You'd expect the boot on a convertible to be, well, minimal. But there's quite a substantial space back there and the back seats still fold down. So you can slot your snowboards and your skis back there. I suppose it makes up for not being able to put a roof rack on. The convertible top folds down into a storage space above the boot, so it doesn't encroach into the storage area. You can load your boot up and still lower the roof down without any worry of breaking anything that you've put into the boot. So I'm loving these little indicator signs on the uh, on the wing mirrors. Just let me know that somebody's coming up there behind me. This is a DSG model. So it does all the gear work for you and everything and it pre-selects what gear you need, what gear you're gonna change into. But should the preference take you, then you can just knock the gear to the side, the M's come up on the dashboard and everything's all manual. You've got flappy paddles here, you can control your gears, knock it down a gear, knock it up a gear, whichever way you want. Um, but you can also yeah, knock down, knock, knock up you know, on the gear stick itself. So there's loads of options of what you can drive and you don't have to just accept that it's an automatic. Yeah, there's no clutch, no clutch control, but you can still tell it what to do. Have a look at this look. It's got a lap timer. It's not an R, but it is an R line, so it comes with extra trim. Extra trim, different wheels, different interior. So the seats are lovely, by the way. There's a mix of upholstery with tight and black art velour cloth and leatherette insert. It's a bit of a mix of materials, but they're comfy, they look nice, and they're nice colors. I like blacks and greys on interiors. Now I know that this road surface that we're on is horrible. It's that horrible concrete motorway surface. So I'm not sure what you'll be able to pick up on the microphone. I hope the sound's okay. But when I'm driving on this in my camper van, it's hideous. On this, yeah, it drives quite nice. Yeah, there's still a horrible noise, but you know, it's not all that bad. So VW have continued with the touch controls on things, but we have still got some buttons. And my favorite thing, there's no buttons on the ledge under the infotainment system. So I can rest my fingers there while I change the radio station without changing the fans or the temperature or the volume. That's good, thank you. But we've still got touch buttons on the steering wheel. I 
touch bar heater controls here. So it's not the end of the world. I'm still not a fan of the touch buttons on the steering wheel because you have to look where you're putting your thumbs. If it's a tactile button, if it's a one that you've got to press, you can feel where you are. You know that you've got the familiar cross shape yeah, of the ups and downs, set and resume on your, your cruise control, etc. But in this one, just a swipe of your thumb over those buttons can influence what the buttons do. Just a swipe of your thumb over those buttons can change your speed, can re yeah, turn your cruise control off, can change your volume settings, change your radio station. And it's quite easy to catch it without realising. What's that all about? That's cheap. Looks like it came out of a 1970s Beetle, that is tiny. It's not a particularly pleasant material either. Uh, yeah, that's, um, that's a letdown. Yeah, I mean, other than that, I like it. So, and Claire, she didn't want to give it back tomorrow. So what else do we know? It's got another great gadget on that I, uh, that I quite like. And I really wish that my Polo had it because I hate the handbrake position on the Polo. In this, auto hold handbrake. I like that. So yeah, overall the car's gone down really well. It's been well received this weekend, plenty of interest and plenty of people saying that it's on their list. I spoke to one chap and his partner and they've already got one on order and having seen this one in the metal, they wish they'd have picked this colour. A few people talked to me this weekend about the difference between electric, petrol and diesel. Now this car is only available with two petrol engines. There were a couple of people I spoke to that were worried about the economy of a petrol engine compared to that of a diesel car instead. Now I know that diesel cars are or can be super economical. And one particular person I spoke to talked about having a two litre diesel and the power and economy that that's got and everything. But with the modern engines and the way that the power is delivered, the way that the economy works, I don't think there's anything to be worried about you know, this one's got a 1.5 petrol engine. It puts out 150 brake horsepower, sorry, 150 PS. This is near as damn it 150 brake horsepower anyway. And I don't think that's insignificant. We had the 1.5 150 PS in our Tiguan and we could quite happily pull a caravan with no problem. And I don't worry about the power and I don't think the economy is anything to worry about either. Now right now, I I'm averaging over 45 miles to the gallon. On a turbo petrol engine. I don't think that's bad. Sure, if you're doing thousands of miles on the motorway every week, then you might notice a difference, but I don't know, I, I just, I don't think there's anything to worry about anymore. A few people were surprised that this wasn't an electric car. I overheard them talking to the partners or friends saying, oh yeah, it's all electric, but it's not. There is no electric option. Now maybe the expectation that it's electric is showing that people's thoughts are evolving and maybe more and more people are getting ready for the switch to electric cars. I mean, I'd, I'd have one. We reviewed the ID4 last year, and yeah, I'd happily drive an ID4. For a lot of people that we've talked to this weekend, it was the first time that they'd seen a T-Rock convertible. Because we had it parked with the nose facing forwards on our club stand, the badge on the back was kind of hidden until somebody took a wander around and they look and they go, oh, it's a T-Rock. 
So yeah, I've introduced a lot of people to the, this weekend. One of the other things that we miss out on our polo that this one's got, it's got vents, directional vents in the back to send a bit of that climate control to your rear passengers. You can fit two rear passengers in the back, by the way. Leg room's not too bad. Uh, my little girl, my 10-year-old, um, she's had plenty of room back there. She's quite happy. I'm just happy that it's got a USB point to plug her iPad into. What else have we got? Oh, I think this has also got the winter pack. And tested it. It's currently 29 degrees. And it's cloudy a bit. So I really don't want to turn the heated steering wheel on, but it's got one. And I really don't want to turn the heated seats on, but it's got them too. And heated wing mirrors and heated washer jets. So it's all set for winter. Let's have it. Let's go. Whee. <laughs> I love that. One thing I've just noticed, as I'm passing a slip road, where it brings the extra lane on, so I'm having a look over my left shoulder to make sure there's nothing coming down the slip road, and I realise how high the back of the car is. It's quite a lift on there, it's quite a bit of a wedge shape to it. But I think it looks sweet. Swage lines on the down the side of the car look nice. The arches look great. A bit of a SUV crossover race profile. I think it sits really well. Right, so what's they gonna do? Right, so Adaptive Cruise is slowing me down for the roundabout. I'm not touching the brakes. Hey, check this out. Look at this. Whoa. Brakes are good. Brakes work. <laughs> okay, so I'm back home from, or near enough back home. What do you mean brake? Not in front of me, a balloon. I don't know what that picked up. Yeah, so I'm, Almost back home. I've been in the car for just shy of an hour. And that has got to be one of the easiest drives ever after a show weekend. Absolute piece of cake. 